Hello, my name is David Broussard, and welcome to this episode of the Office 365 Bootcamp. Here we're going to talk about Power BI, and really what that is is how to get insights into your data. Now, the neat thing about Power BI is it uses tools that you're already familiar with. And you think about it, most people these days, when they, when they go and create reports, they're actually using a tool that they use for a lot of other things, and that tool is Excel. So, as an example, I've got a document here that uh, has a bunch of data in it. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of show what we have inside this data. There we go. Uh, and, and you can see here I've got a whole bunch of, of data out here in this file that, that has got uh, a reseller in store, a product SKU, sales quantity, unit price, total sales, unit cost, all kinds of things, right? So if I have this data, and let's say all this data is being output from some kind of back-end system to me, I may want to do something with it. So normally what I would do is I would go ahead and highlight all of this information, and I would go ahead and start creating some charts. Now one of the neat things about Excel is it actually, go, once I highlight a range of data, it starts suggesting things to me for quick analysis. So I'll go ahead and go down here and say, hey, do I want to go ahead and create a chart? Do I want to create some totals? Do I want to create some tables, like some pivot tables or, or um, spark lines or, or specific charts that are out here? And it's actually pretty straightforward to do. In addition to that, I could go ahead and say, you know what, I want to go ahead and insert a pivot chart and a pivot table. And so I'm going to select all that data that I've got. I'm going to put it into a new worksheet. So I go ahead and select OK. And what has it done? It's taken all of that data and turned it into a pivot chart, which enables me to go ahead and slice and dice it. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll say, you know what, what I really want to do is I want to take total sales. And just by clicking on that, it says, oh, that's obviously it's a sum, right? And then I want to go ahead and look at that by, let's say, reseller or, and store. So simply by clicking those two fields, I've gone ahead and created for me a series of row labels over here. And then over here, I've actually got a chart that I can actually look at that shows me all of the information that was out there. Well, that's probably too much data. So instead of doing reseller st uh, store, let's go ahead and look by product SKU. So here I've only got a few things that I can take a look at here, but it gives me a little bit better idea of what I'm looking at. And instead of looking at total sales, I could instead look at sales quantity. Or I can even look at both of them simultaneously if I really want to. So you can see it's very, very easy for me to go out and actually create these, these, um, these reports and work with them. And you know what? Your users are already doing that today. Everybody does this on a regular basis. The hard part then comes in how I go and share that with other people inside my organization. Well, in the old days, what you're probably doing today is I would take this file and I would then email it to everybody, right? And then everybody would have a copy of that file, in, uh, and it could be rather large because the data is embedded with it as well, and we've emailed it out to everybody throughout the organization. Well, with Office 365, we've got a new and better way of doing that, and that new and better way is called Power BI. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and open up the Power BI desktop tool. And from here, what I've already done is I've actually gone out and I've gotten data from that Excel workbook. And I've pulled all of that data into this Power BI desktop tool. And you can see all it's really done is taken all of that data and put it into a, a, a table inside of here. Now what's neat is I can actually take multiple tables and I can build relationships. I can do all kinds of data modeling right inside of this tool. Incidentally, you can do that in, in Excel 2016 as well. Uh, Power BI Desktop is really just the, the uh, Power View and Power Reporting sections of Excel. Uh, it doesn't have all of the other features of Excel. And I find that actually makes it a little bit easier to work with when I'm just doing reporting. So now that I've got this data, I can actually go back over here and say, you know what, I want to go ahead and create a report. So I'll go ahead and say that I want to create a bar chart. And I'll say, well, I want to see total cost and I want to see it by product, S, uh, product SKU. And you can see, very easily, I was able to go out and create that report. Now, the difference is, and so I can say that's, that's my report that way, but let me go ahead and add another one in here. So I'm going to go ahead and say, go ahead and create another report. Uh, I'll go ahead and say I want to create another report. And this one I'm going to go ahead and say is uh, the total, uh, the sales quantity by reseller and store, OK? And so you can see that I've actually got another report that I've, that I've created, and it just is done a little bit differently. If I want to change these visualizations, I could say, oh, you know what, let me show me that as a pie chart instead, or show me that as a, um, 
I forget what that one particular, particular one is called off the top of my head, a tree map if I want to. And I can see in, by hovering over these, it can actually tell me the information of each one of these pieces that's out there. If I want to see these as, an, as a, uh, a line chart, I can do that. Um, any one of the different uh, charts that are out there, I can even, as you can see, I can go ahead, if my data is geocoded, I can even put it right on top of a map. Well, I'll go ahead and go back to just a standard chart there. This one up here, I'll go ahead and convert into a pie chart because that one would work pretty well for it. So I still, I have this information. That's pretty valuable. I can easily build reports. I can see, as you can see down here at the bottom, let me go ahead and pull this up a little bit. I can add multiple pages to this particular report. And I can go ahead and add new visualizations out there and pull in by sales period, go ahead and tell me total sales by sales period um, if I want to. Um, I can go ahead and, and build as many of these as I want to. Now, how do I actually make this visible to other people? Well, I don't really want to email this around. Instead, I'm going to use this publish feature over here. And what I'm doing is I'm going to save all my changes first. And I'm going to call this sales. And I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to push it out to the Power BI uh, destination. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and push it out to my workspace. If you'll notice, it sees a number of these other groups out here, like Contoso Cowboys and David's Cool Group and the M400 RFP. These were other uh, groups and things that we've created at various points in time inside of our O365 environment. But I'm going to stick it in my workspace. And it's going to publish this sales Power, Power BI um, file out to that location. Once it's out there, I now will have the ability to go out and actually look at what's out there. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up in Power BI. Now, when I open it up in Power BI, you'll see, hey, this is a web application now, right? And you can see that my reports are still right here. And as I click on these and as I, as I navigate through here, you'll notice these two on the same page. If I click on this particular one, notice that down below it's actually showing me that percentage of the sales in all of these. As I go through each one of these, it's actually linked the two charts together, and it's, and it's, it's putting them together and filtering one off the other uh, inside of these. I can do the same thing coming down here and clicking, and you can see that it actually is showing me just how much of this, of this data is coming from that one particular bar. Not very much in these cases, right? Um, ac across everything. Well, all right, I now have created this and I've published it out to the web. How does anybody get a chance to go out and see it at this point in time? Well, at this point, I've got a couple of options on how I can go ahead and share this. One of the things that I can do is I can actually go ahead and save this as a dashboard if I want to and push it out, or I can go ahead and grab this as an embed code and, and uh, store it inside of someplace else. So what I'm going to do to, do, to, to accomplish that is I'm going to go ahead first and create a dashboard. And I'm going to call this sales. Whoops. So nice if I actually spelled it right. So let's try renaming it and calling it sales. And then on this dashboard, I want to add uh, some content that, I've, uh, that I've, gone, I've got. So now that I've got this report and I want to share it someplace, what are my options around that? Well, if I click on the file menu over here, you'll notice I've got a number of different options. One of them is I can publish this to the web which gives me an embed code. If I go ahead and click on that, it says, do I want to embed this in a public website? Now, if I do that, it's actually going to make this visible to anybody, right? So if I go ahead and create this embed code and go ahead and publish it, it's going to give me a link, and it also is going to give me a bunch of a, a, an iframe code that I can go ahead and put down there. I can even tell it how big I want it to be, OK? That works, but normally I don't want to put this on, a, on an externally visible web right to the intranet. intranet. I want to put it on my intranet so my salespeople can see it. So to do that, I can go down here and embed this in SharePoint Online. So I'll go ahead and click that, and you'll see I can use this link to securely embed this report in a SharePoint page. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that link, okay? And then I'm going to go gr open up a SharePoint um, site. Here's my sales and marketing site, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and edit this page. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to add this to a page. I'll go ahead and edit my page. And I'll, say that I'll go into my, into my uh, content down here. And I'll go ahead and say that I want to insert an embed code. And what I'm going to do is go grab over here this embed code that it generates for me. And I'll go ahead and drop it right into this 
uh, embed, embed link, and you're going to see that it goes ahead and sees it, and it gives me a preview of what it looks like. And I'll go ahead and say that I want to insert it. And then now that I'm done, I'll go ahead and save this page. And once this page is saved, you'll see that it actually goes ahead and embeds this report right down here. And I can go ahead and see that I've taken my sales dashboard now that I've gone ahead and created that's based off of that Excel workbook, and I've gone ahead and put it right into the sales page so that people can come in and actually see the information. And you'll see, by the way, all of this still works, right? As I click on these different areas in the pie chart, the different things, the filters still work uh, across things. It, this is exactly like it worked when it was in the Power BI desktop, like exactly like it did on the website. I'm simply uh, ex accessing it here uh, on this particular embed code. Now, one of the things about this is all of this data is currently static because what I've done is I've pulled it in from an Excel workbook, which means that these numbers are never going to change until somebody goes out and actually changes those numbers and re-imports them into Power BI. That's not really great for most organizations. So if you want to make this data live, which means that that data is being updated constantly and is always up to date, you're going to want to go ahead and buy the Power BI license or go all the way up to the E5 license, which includes the Power BI licenses. That's going to enable you to set up a connection between that source system that's giving you all the data and let you push it directly into the Power BI system so that those reports can be up to date and live. Well, that's all for now, and I hope you enjoyed it.